On February 28, 2014, this is Advanced Lesson Number 14 on Responder Rebins. Greeting Bridge friends, Michael here at Bridge Hands, and welcome you back to another lesson on this time Responder Rebids. We're going to divert a little bit from our two over one series and take a look at something that, well, frankly, most people don't want to speak about. It's hard enough when we get agreements on our handy valuation, what we should open with, then the responder bids. And then if that isn't hard enough, the opener rebids because there's now so many permutations. And after that, responder rebids. You don't find bridge books covering that. As far as open rebids, though, let me just kind of segue for a moment. There is one book that um, is a good one. It's been out, oh, for a long time, but it's still very uh, much accurate for most of today's bidding style. Alan Truscott's The Bidding Dictionary. And um, let me show you just as a, for instance, on one not uncommon bidding sequence that comes up. This and this is about 300 pages worth, by the way, of mostly just bids and their meaning. So here's the sequence opening one heart, you bid two diamonds, and I bid three diamonds. Well, in two over one, that would be game forcing, no doubt about it. But let's take a look a little bit about the meaning of what the bid might be strength 12 points or more, spades by the opener, two to three, hearts, five or more. Diamonds, three plus. So far, so good. Clubs, probably two or three. Um, forcing a game, question mark. Well, for two over one bidders, yes, it would be. Standard American, it would be invitational. Then it says, see note 357. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at note 357. Oh boy, this is a long one. I'm going to go over it kind of quickly just to give you a flavor of the issues here. In the natural or Bergen style, this can be a minimum, although Bergen requires three-card support to have top honor. Most would consider partnership committed to a game, or even if a responder has invitational hand with strong clubs. A possible agreement is that a re-raise by responder shows the invitational hand and can be passed, since 11 tricks may be out of reach if both players are minimum. Even with a fit, well, this would be for the non-two over one players like standard American where maybe three no trump is not appropriate. But if three club was forcing to game, the re-raise can be Blackwood. Well, how about that? And that isn't enough. They keep going on to say, in the case of Western traditional styles, the raise shows some extra values. I think Western, they're kind of meaning the two over one system there. This causes some distortion. If opener has a minimum with four card support, he can force a rebid with his five card suit, even if weak. In all styles, the absence of a splinter suggests a balanced hand, which makes you think they're heading for three no trump. But the splinter requires extra value since the Western style and perhaps the natural and Bergen sauce. Aye, aye, aye. You see the problem, don't you? There's so much that can be in partnership agreements, and that's why I brought this up. Before we get into this discussion, we need to consider is that what is your and your partner's agreement. And if you're going to have the dreaded manila folders, remember me speaking about those before? That was when Eddie Cantor and Mike Lawrence, the Dallas Aces there, the winning team, and um, Eddie thought there should be lots of agreements. He kept sending these manila folders. And finally, Mike Lawrence, wait a second, recall what happened? He said, let's get some generalized agreements that cover lots of situations. And so today, I'm going to try to reinforce that on some of these auctions that we're going to see. Rather than to have all these different agreements, if you have a partnership style, some of your existing agreements and can extend those onto some of these new ones we're going to see today, all the better. But the good news is we have several hundred people responded to our survey, to the questionnaire, um, is a 40 question questionnaire. We're going to take a look at the first 10 of those in today's lesson. We're going to have multiple segments because we have a lot to cover. So we'll spend some time taking a look at the questions, taking a look at the responses, as well as the discussion behind the responses. And then we're going to take a look at some hands to illustrate that. Sometimes we'll have maybe two or three or maybe four variations of a hand in bidding styles and see how that turns out. Or as one of the politicians once said, 
How'd that work for you? Okay, on our first hand, we have the bidding starts off one heart by me, two hearts by you, two no trump by me. Okay, we have a agreement. You've made a sign-off bid, and now I bid to no trump. What is that? And the survey says, Opener has invitational plus values and is non-forcing? Hmm. Well, 31%. 32% rounding off said that was a good one. Next, opener has invitational plus values, forcing one round. And yes, a higher percentage, 46% um, agreed with that. There was a couple, another one such as 9%, opener has invitational values is game forcing. Well, not a very popular method. I don't think it's really played for by people that I've ever played with before. But let's take a look for the 164 responses, some of what came up. First off, I like the fact that some of the people say we played such things as this Kokish, Eric Kokish, um, a world-class coach at the Bermuda Bowl, um, really high level. And uh, some years ago, he gave me a copy of his system notes. How many pages do you think? Beautiful Microsoft Word document. It was around 500 pages. My goodness, and it was wonderfully annotated. So um, Eric certainly knows what he's speaking about, and some people play that method. Now, there's a lot of different types of opener rebids after one of a major, two of a major, and then a help suit game try. Eric Kokish is just one of them, and if you were to go to the Bridge Hands website, you would find that um, searching for help suit game tries, you would find you would have about, oh, maybe seven or eight, I think we've got. Long suit game tries, short suit game tries, Kokish game tries, Erwin game tries. Um, and here's the one for Eric Kokish that is very popular for the advanced players. In essence, what it says is that after one of a major, two of a major, making the next step, so one spade, two spades, two no trump, it says, partner, responder, I want you to further identify your hand. If you can help me, say the suit. That way I don't have to say the suit. I can be the man of mystery and you can, if you can help me, fine. If not, you just retrace back to three of our agreed upon major, three spades in this case, and the opponents are none the wiser as far as where our chink on our armor is, where the weak suit is, and that's one of the advantage. Now Eric Kokish has a three-way game try. So if it goes one spade, two spades, and then skip one step, rather than two no trump, it goes three clubs, that is showing a short suit. How about that? So then you do show a short suit if you skip more than one level. So one heart, two hearts, two no trump. Well, it's two levels, so it says you have a short suit. It can't be short no trump, so that would be the way you would show a shortness in spades. One heart, two hearts, three diamonds, says shortness in diamonds, and so forth. And there's a little more to the convention. But I just want to be aware that some of these people I see are saying they play that method. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other different options here that people are doing. Here's one that says um, they play two no trump as a short suit game try, right? That's part of it there. If you start off in the um, heart suit, they can play it, and that would shortness for spades. Um, here's one that says opener has six losers. Good. Yeah, when opener is asking, I'll remind you that responder says they've got maybe two cover cards. Six to nine points. Hopefully it's an ace and a king somewhere. Or else some other values, secondary honors that will equate to two cover cards. Two playing tricks. So if you don't have six covers, in other words, six losing trick count, I should say, then there's no reason to ask because your partner has to cover three. And if they've only got two, they can't. So where does the third one come from? This is where if they can help and where the opener maybe has two or three losers on a side suit or the responder has some other undisclosed values where they can provide some help, maybe a fourth trump, something like that. So I think that's worthwhile. There's another person here who says two no trump shows 18 points. Um, not exactly. It does in some auctions, but not in this one. So in this type of an auction, when it goes one of a major, two of a major, two no trump, 
you don't have to have 18 points, but you do need to have six losers. Now, if you had five losers, go to game. Your partner's got two cover cards. Don't be weak and timid. You only need two covers from partner. Five losers, too. And you may only have 15 points, but you've got a two-suited hand. So don't think just about high card points in this auction, because you do have what? A partnership fit. Partnership trip fit, you can start counting losing trick count. Okay, good. Well, now I guess it's time to go ahead and head for the table and start taking a look at some hands. See you there. Okay, and we are here at the table with four different hand segments to illustrate that first hand. South is going to be the dealer and has ace, king, queen five times in hearts. Queen, jack, nine spot in spades, looking good. King, three times in diamonds. And queen, jack, tight in clubs. So high card points, three in clubs, another three in diamonds is six, another three in spades is nine, and another nine in hearts. One distribution point, what are we waiting for? <laughs> well, we don't have enough to go to game. Um, we don't have a semi-self-sustained suit yet. Remember, that's the suit quality of nine. Honors plus length, so we have five plus three is eight. So we're going to start off one heart and look to see if our partner will make a bid. Over in the west hand, it's a 5-3-3-2 three, three, um, in clubs, 10-9, five times. Ace, king, three times in spades, 9-8-7 hearts, and two intermediate diamonds, 8-7, a pass. Okay, to the north hand, our partner in the north has um, a 4-4-3-2, four, 4-4 four, four, four in the red suits, jack, 10, two small in our heart suit, 10 double 10 in spades, jack four times in diamonds, and ace king third, nice suit in clubs. So seven, eight, nine high card points. Uh, potentially one distribution for that um, double 10 spade, don't you think? So it's about a two and a half bid. I don't know if I'd go quite to three, some of you might, but I think it's a, certainly a good two heart bid. If you're playing um, Bergen bids, you can have some other things you can do here. But um, probably most people go two hearts, or some may go three hearts invitational. Okay, over to the east hand. It's a five, four, three, one. Eh, somebody's got a singleton here. Five spades, eight, seven, six, five, four. Um, singleton heart. A ace, queen, ten, nine in diamonds, nice tennises. And three intermediate clubs, no bid. Well, back to south. Okay, one heart. Two hearts, let's say, um, are losers at this count since we have a partnership fit. Now we can use our losing trick count. No losers in hearts. Two in spades. Two in diamonds. And two in clubs. Six losers. Help suit game try, isn't it? Now, really with these queen jacks, it's kind of problematic. If you think about it, where could our partner have their six points? Um, I guess it could be a couple jacks in the red suits, but other than that, they're going to have to have some helpful cards for us. At any rate, if you counter the six loser hand, remember if you had queen third in spades, that's three losers. Queen ten, two and a half losers. Queen jack, I think it's less than two losers myself. But let's say we're using a help suit game try. Standard vanilla help suit game try is just two no trump. If you're playing the cokish then you're going to bid one more than the agreed upon suit. You're going to be bidding two spades to see where your partner will help. But let's say we're just playing standard help suit game tries to no trump. Partner in the north will say, yes, um, I can help in clubs. But rather than to identify the club suit, I think with a good two and a half plus cover cards, right? Because you've got this jack ten four times in hearts. I just go right to four hearts. And let's say that's the way it plays out. So it's four hearts in the south. The opening lead, I think, from ace-king three in spades would be the ace. Ace comes out. We play low. Um, east plays low. Um, are you wanting them to go to diamonds? I'm not sure what you're doing there. But I guess that's the thinking is say, okay, we don't normally lead ace unless it's from ace-king. And so... All right, they do switch and to the diamond. They see the dummy, and they said, yeah, that must be what they want. We go up with the ace, and we come back with a diamond, hoping our partner has the king or a short. No, that's not going to happen. Um, South had the king, so it's time to go ahead and start pulling trump. We have nine. They both play. 
we play a second time, one shows out, plays a five of spades, so it's a five, four, three, one. We play a third time, and we get the last trump from West. And pretty much straightforward play from here. We can go ahead and play our club, a club to the king, play the ace, and pitch a diamond. Thank you very much. And now we can go ahead and play a spade, let them win their king, and we have the rest of the tricks. So although it seemed like we had a lot more power than to make 10 tricks, we just barely squeaked by. And the reason being is that, well, we didn't really have a lot of extras. Despite with a seemingly strong hand, secondary honors is that um, we were happy. Even the fact that the ace of diamonds was on side, it was um, in front of our king. So there you go. Let's go ahead and take a look at another hand variation, though. It's going to be the plot's going to start thickening here, as you might expect, so we'll go ahead and try part B. In part B, we're going to see a little bit different variation of this hand. And then we're going to see some different variations in play also, just to show that it's not all just a declares game. The defenders, they've got a lot of work to do too. Okay, so here we go. South, same hand, one heart. Um, this time West has um, three cover cards, Ace, King, three times in spades, and the Ace of Diamonds. Do you want to come in with a bid? Um, three primary honors, 11 points. No, I don't think so, because your clubs, your five-card suit is 10, 9, 5 times. If you had the spades, Ace, King, in the club suit and switch them around, I'd say you might make a... A sporty bit if you felt really good. Maybe you were non-vulnerable. A lot of people like to have six-card suits, and we don't have that here. So, no, I don't think you're going to make a call. If your partner's got something to pass out seat, they can borrow the proverbial king from us and save the day. Okay, back to north. Um, same hand before. Let's say two hearts. Um, this time east has even less. has only two high-card points. Wondering why the auction's going so slow. So, um, they'll pass. Um, to, uh, well, let's say we're going to do the Kokish style this time. That would be asking one higher than the agreed upon suit, two spades. Um, interesting, West thinks, but passes. And says, well, um, where can I help? Um, I can help in clubs, I guess. I could go right to four hearts, but let's say I want to just play the convention. I'll say three clubs, I can help in clubs. I can reduce your losers to one or less. I have ace-king three times. And um, Sal says, oh, great, um, you have some extras somewhere, and you have some cover cards there? Cool. Um, so we'll go ahead and go for hearts. And the um, lead this time, it's Ace of Spades, and um, I like this better this time since East has no help. Play the eight, says continue on with the king. You don't want him switching to some other suit. So that's a nice play over here by East, and we'll get into that more to follow. A king and plays a low, high, low, okay. Plays a third spade, um, a pitch, and they had the queen in south. All right, once again, pretty straightforward play. Ace, king, third round to capture that last heart. Um, we play the club to the queen. Now we come back to the king, and on the ace, we'll pitch a diamond. And we're going to go ahead and play a diamond to the nine. Um, no reason to play the queen here, correct, because we want to play lowest of t equivalent touching honors. We play to the king, it loses. Oh, um, we go down one, don't we? Look at this. So what's going on here? Well, we've got the same points, but the ace is behind the king, and the queen is behind the jack. This is what we might call is a frozen suit. Whoever breaks this suit shall lose. Now, when you're playing at the table, you're not going to know as it goes jack, queen, king, ace on a suit, but just be aware. And a good warning signal is when you see a jack sitting in the dummy, don't be so soon to play that suit. Now, if they're going to promote another suit or get a rough and slough, there are times when you want to do it. But let's go ahead and take a look at 1C, and we'll take a look and see just how this can um, let some wind out of our sails. So, okay. On our third hand segment, we're going to have the same hand for um, north and south. And let's take a look and see what we've got here for east and west. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Ace king three times in spades. Ace double ten in diamonds. Leading the ace of spades. And 
East this time says, I'm going to play low. I can't help in that suit. I don't want you to play that suit. Well, no, you don't really want that. I think you should have played an eight to say partner continue because they're likely to switch. And that switch might just be to the diamond. Sure enough, E says, well, hey, I've got ace doubleton. I would love it if you've got a king of diamonds and you're looking for rough. You must have some point somewhere because South did a help suit game try. And I've only got 11 and I only see about 10. So I'm assuming you might have the king of diamonds. So cool. I'll play my ace of diamonds. And East, they're still showing positive attitude. Yeah, play it again. Um, South is going to be happy now. They win the king. They wouldn't have won that king. They don't deserve to win the king. The ace was behind it. But they gave away a trick because of East playing a discouraging signal. As they say, home on the range where seldom is heard a discouraging word. But when you don't signal right, that is a discouraging outcome. So at this point, South's in great shape now. They go ahead and they're going to lose one spade trick, but they're not going to lose this diamond trick. They're going to pull Trump. They're going to play their two clubs. Then the third club they're going to get over in this hand, being careful to promote that with transportation not much of a problem and then they're going to pitch the diamond loser so they made their game um, so watch out there bottom line over here in east play that high encouraging card you don't want them switching to that diamond suit you saw what happened here okay one more try let's go ahead and bring a crescendo on this first hand here west doesn't have that ace king of spades only has an ace doubleton. Now I like Jerry Fox is saying leading a singleton oftentimes is not fruitful and leading from an ace doubleton is twice as bad. <laughs> Maybe not always, but do you lead from an ace doubleton in this situation? I think so. And when we have four points, how many should we expect our partner to have? I'd say a better part of ten. Now, in those earlier hands, the reason we won't want to play from our ace doubleton is because if we've got 10, 11 points, it's unlikely our partner's got the king of our specific suit. Here, it's more likely they can have the king of the suit we're doubleton. So, we're going to go ahead and lead that ace, and when our partner shows encouragement, um, yes. And by the way, I'm going to go back there. I suppose when we do that, South, you could go ahead rather than play the 10. You could play the queen smoothly and temple. Not too fast, not too slow, but see if you can do a false card. I doubt it'll help, but for some people, it might work. You know, skullduggeries and shenanigans is part of this game. So at any rate, it goes a 7 to the king, and we're going to get our rough here over in the east hand. Our third diamond's played. We rough it for the winning line of play, and that was the only winning line of play. So ace doubletons... Not normally a good idea, but if you have few points, and based upon the auction, your partner has a good chance. When they're at the 5 level or 6 level, it might be more prudent to do it at that time. Well, okay, Bridge friends, that completes part 1 for those of you who are, are casual or free members. Uh, for the rest of you who will have the um, free membership, and for our Ultra and Premium members, please come on over to part 2, 3, and 4 and see more. So if you do have the free membership, you're certainly entitled to see part two, or we're going to have um, hand number two. We're going to get into the bidding as well as all the survey questions and some of the illustrative responses that came back. And for those of you with the premium ultra membership, we've got a lot more hands coming. So we've got 20 hands all together today. So go ahead, get your cup of coffee, your favorite drink, and um, maybe even a bag of popcorn, and we'll see you over in part two. So as always, thanks for coming, supporting Bridge Hands, and I hope you have a good day playing Bridge. Bye for now.